Hi folks, it's Dr. Christine Sauer here, and I'm excited to show you today how the brain and weight loss really goes together. And really without a good brain, you will not lose weight and keep it off. So this event will introduce you to the basics of brain health. And as I said in the event announcement, the event is not only free, but uh, for those registered, if I have your email, I will send you your brain health tip sheet for free. And also you are free if you're live in the event to ask questions. And if you couldn't make the time, I understand there will be a recording released. So if you watch it later, you can tag me, PM me on Facebook or email me and you can just Google my name on, uh, and find my email. And I will be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, for you. Alrighty, uh, let's get right started. Uh, the event will be about 30 to 60 minutes. And as I said, I warn you, it will be funny. So get ready to have some fun with our brain while at the same time learning a thing or two why the brain is really important for all of our life. This is really a serious topic, but I like to do it in a way that is a little lighthearted and fun. What I will be doing is I'll be sharing my screen and I have a few slides uh, so you can really see the images that are stunning. All right, here we go. The three dimensions of brain health and really it's five dimensions because as I always say, we have five dimensions of wellness. The, the, the financial is a basis because we have to have money enough to have shelter and eat. And then there is, of course, the physical dimension of our body, the mental dimension of our thoughts, the social dimension of our relationships, the, um, the, and then there is a spiritual dimension, our why, our purpose, our meaning, connection with the universal powers. So let's get in it. What I will talk to you about today, and I will teach much more going further, is why do we need to care about brain health? Most people never think about it. Then how the brain, the body, and the mind really interact with each other. Because we are not just parts. We are just not just a gallbladder. We are not just a bone. We are not just a stomach. We are a whole person, an individual. And modern medicine sadly forgets that often. And Let's talk about how we can address all three dimensions of brain health. And because it's very close to my uh, cause, I love examining root causes as a physician and a naturopath. I love to talk about the three main causes of diseases of our time that we call diseases of aging, but they're really not, and what to do about it. And then we'll talk about brain and body healthy habits. So we can prevent disease and restore well-being. So that all has to do with brain health. Who thought? And here are some really good images why we need to care about our brain. Because those images, by the way, are from Dr. Daniel Amen, who, uh, uh, who is a pioneer of brain spec imaging when it comes to uh, uh, the brain structure related to behavior. And uh, he is one of my mentors. He trained me and he's a wonderful human being himself. Very smart, very funny. I love him. So these are images by him. This is a healthy brain. And as you can imagine, when your brain works right, you work right. But this is the brain of a chronic alcoholic. When he, and you see all those holes. Now, those are areas of reduced function. Those are not dead areas. It's not like Swiss cheese where there's really nothing in the holes. It's just it does not show in the brain spec scan because there's no activity. That means I, so I say the brain cells are sleeping. And you know, with the right methods, you can awaken most of those cells. Now, there's, of course, events like a very devastating traumatic brain injury or certain tumors then actually brain areas are lost forever or a very devastating stroke. But that is, in most people, that's not the case. So we will be talking more about how to reawaken sleeping brain cells that have been damaged by different influences. And we'll talk much more about it going on. 
So as you can imagine, when parts of your brain are sleeping, you have trouble in your life. And what Dr. Amen found out is that specific areas of the brain relate to specific behaviors. All right, now you may still ask, but why really is that so important for me? Yeah, okay, the brain looks a little damaged, but so what? You know why? Because success starts with an optimized brain. Think about it. Brains run the world. Who runs our government? What do they do? They run the world with their brain, whether it works well or not. They do. So it is really important what our brains do and what our leaders' brains do. I would love to examine the head of some of our leaders, wouldn't you? No, we can't do that. But really, brains run the world. Brains run the stock market, make financial decisions. We all make financial decisions based on our brain health. You think you make your decisions? You're wrong. Your brain, your physical brain, made your decision about 15 milliseconds before you are even aware that you're making it. We can show that in functional messenger RNA, it's really your brain that makes your decision, not you. Now, brains make decisions about the foods we eat. Brains run local markets. Brains make all of our decisions. And that is really why brain health is so important. Brains make decisions in relationships, whether you get along with your partner, whether you have a tumultuous relationship, whether you raise your children in a healthy way, whether you expose them to a damaged a family environment, which most of us, by the way, when we were young are done, including myself. So don't feel bad if that's what you did. There's ways to heal that. And brains determine whether you're fat or thin. Now, those are pictures of me. In 2005, I do not think my brain was healthy. By the way, I know it wasn't healthy. I was depressed. I was fat. Look at that picture. I'm smiling. I was not happy at all. But most of us, even when we are not happy, we are so trained to put a fake smile on our face. Have you done it? I'm sure you did. I done it for the first 38 to 40 years of my life. All I did was put a fake smile on my face. And what did it result in? In a fat body and a depressed mind on antidepressants, on other psychiatric pills, that I now call zombie pills, because all they do is lower your brain function. But there's natural ways to heal your brain. And we'll talk about that later. And after I discovered that, with the help of Dr. Amen and many other mentors, and of course, trained as a physician and a naturopath, I knew a thing or two about medicine and body and function and physiology that I will teach, by the way, to you. 11 years later, look at me. I felt more confident. I was much more happier and I was 150 pounds lighter. Now, some people call it body confidence. Yeah, it is whole person confidence because we are individuals. And now it's 16 years later or 17 years later, I still didn't regain the weight. Why? Because I trained my brain for lasting weight loss. That's what I do. That's what I teach others to do. And the resulting uh, results will not only be lasting weight loss, it will be more confidence, more happiness, more contentment, and a healthier body lifestyle overall. So I want to invite you to listen in while I explain how exactly we do that. Now, first, I want to talk a few things about Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Amen is my mentor, but not just that. He's a psychiatrist, an adult psychiatrist, and a child and teen psychiatrist. He has written many, many best-selling books, among others. The New York Times bestseller, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life, that you might have seen. And it's an amazing book. He wrote spec, he, did, he pioneered spec scans. He has clinics all over the US. He's a brilliant lecturer, he's a brain health guru. And uh, when you Google him, you will also find that he's labeled a quack. 
So in our society, a doctor that does things like that, helps people, has a higher success rate statistically than other clinics, wrote scientific papers and is labeled a quack, that is a recommendation in my book. <laughs> All right. It's maybe a little counterintuitive, but it's important to use your brain to think about what you read and see <laughs> in general media. Now, a little bit about me. Maybe you are curious by now who I really am. What, I'm, what am I saying? Why am I qualified to teach you? Now, I'm not only a German-trained physician and a naturopath, a gastrointestinal disease specialist, I'm an allergologist, so I know a little bit about food sensitivities and allergies. I'm also a certified brain health and mental health professional and brain trainer. And I decided to work as a health and life coach. And as you can notice, I'm very passionate about it. But I also have a private life. Here in the picture, you see hubby and me, hubby Mike. <laughs> He's a very good guy. We are together for nearly 25 years now, for all ups and downs in life of life and you can imagine a relationship is always ups and downs it's not steady it's not always happy and we have our little sparkle dog Rudy the Pomeranian who thinks he's a husky and behaves like one but he is really only 20 pounds and he's cute and I love to go on nature walks and take him out um Let's talk the three dimensions of brain health. Uh, what we're talking about is body, mind, and spirit, the classic three dimensions. But as I mentioned before, there's, of course, the social dimension, the relationships missing, and also the financial dimensions, because more and more people are struggling financially, and that has a big impact on their stress levels and has a big impact on the body, mind, spirit connection. Because, for example, stress affects your gut microbiome and the gut microbiome affects your brain health. So it all goes together. It's not a system that you just can take a stomach pill and you fix something. That's not how it works when it comes to chronic diseases. And here's why. Look at all those chronic diseases of our civilized world, as I say. Okay. Now, they say it's because we get older as a population. And we'll talk about whether it's true. But what it really is, more and more people are suffering from upset stomach, inflammation, leaky gut, fatigue, brain fog, food allergies, gluten sensitivity, autoimmune diseases, gastrointestinal like irritable bowel, um, inflammatory bowel disease, Morbus Crohn's, colitis, uh, MS, uh, even, even certain brain diseases are probably autoimmune diseases. And there's many people that have chronic skin problems, allergies, eczema, and chronic pain. And even more people, especially now after the pandemic, suffer from mental health issues like depression, anxiety, and some are really seriously sick from that. And the worries are just overwhelming them and robbing them of the joy of life that we really all are entitled to when we live on this beautiful planet. And children often, and even adults, are labeled with uh, neurodevelopmental diseases like ADHD, autism, or other brain issues like memory problem, dementia, Alzheimer's. Now, interestingly, autism and ADHD are often uh, said to be caused by genetic issues. And yes, there are genetic tendencies, but it is a gun and trigger thing. The genetics gives you the gun. The environment pulls the trigger. And we'll talk about that in a few slides when I introduce you to my barrel model of disease. And I tell you, it's fun and it's very clear what I mean. But when I got back, memory problems are getting more and more common. Many people are so <laughs> scared when they get older that they may develop dementia. And dementia is not unavoidable. It's not just because you get older in most cases. There's exceptions. As if it's everything in life, there's exceptions. Now, Dale Bredesen wrote a groundbreaking book, The End of Alzheimer's, where he 
actually as a neurologist, and I'll talk about that in a separate presentation, he uh, tried for 30 years to find an Alzheimer medication. His wife, a naturopath, laughed at him and said, hey, you can't find it. It's too complicated. And he said, I'll find it. After 30 years, he finally decided to listen to his wife. I should tell that to my husband. And he tried what's now known as the Bredesen protocol. And his first patients, lo and behold, their beginning Alzheimer's disease got better. Unheard of in the medical conventional system. And still, then he did more studies that was 12 to 13 years ago. And by now we know that even if you have two Alzheimer genes, you can reduce your risk of actually getting the disease by 50%. Now you still have a risk, but you can reduce the risk with a healthy lifestyle, which you start early enough. And the three main causes of disease that Dale Bredesen identified and that I totally agree with are inflammation, toxins, and nutrient deficiencies. Now, you may say, I'm overweight. How can, can I be nutrient deficient? Ah, I'll tell you how. Because what happens is when we eat too much junk food, when we eat too much junk food, the brain does not get all the nutrients it needs for us to optimally function, for our metabolism to be on a functioning on a high level. So we have the energy to work and the memory and the body systems work well. So the brain has little sensors like a thermostat. And the sensors, they tell you whether you have enough nutrients or not. And there's probably more sensors than we still know because, hey, medicine is only in infancy. Brain science is in its infancy. We don't know nothing about the brain in the great context what's possible. Now, when somebody say, say an extreme case, you eat Twinkies every day, Twinkies, nothing else. Your brain uh, assesses nutrients and it says, no, not enough nutrients, but you eat calories, 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 and stuff it in you. Well, you get fat, but you still have a nutrient deficiency and your brain still tells you you're hungry, you are hungry, you need to eat, you need to eat. Because as long as the brain does not sense that it has enough nutrients, it tells you to eat. That's how we are programmed. That, and you can retrain your brain to love the foods that give you more nutrition and then supplement if necessary and change that whole process to one where the weight effortlessly keeps falling off and eventually stays off for good. It's a process. It's not something that, it's not a quick fix. It's not one diet. It's not one recipe. It's a whole body process. All right, that's it. I want to talk with you about genes or and environment. And I call that the barrel model of disease. Why barrel model? Now, just for a moment, employ your imagination. And think about people are different when we are born. Yes, the genes, we have different genes. Of course we do. Some people say are born with a small barrel. You have a small barrel with a small spout. <laughs> Other people are born with a medium-sized barrel, with a medium-sized spout. Most of us are. And then there's people that are born with a really big barrel and a big spout. Now, what does it mean? Well, when we are in an environment, it usually rains. And I'll show you in the next slide what I mean with the rain. The rain is filling our barrel. And yes, we have a spout where the water can drain. So keep that in mind when we talk about what is filling your barrel. So what is filling your barrel are environmental toxins, malabsorption, if your gut health is not optimal and you don't absorb the nutrients you're eating. Inflammation, when your body's on fire. If you don't get enough exercise, if you have a high stress level, if you have problems in your relationship, if you have toxic thoughts or toxic people in your life, if your gut microbiome is out of whack, if you have infections that are ravaging your body, if your brain chemistry is not functioning well for various reasons, if you have a nutrient deficiency, just like I said, 
if you can't absorb what you're eating for several several things and absorption and uh, uh, and 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 assimilations are actually different and digestion. If you're smoking, if you take certain medications, it's all filling your barrel. Now, why is it important? Now, imagine the brain, the barrel is full and then it overflows. That's when you get symptoms of disease, and you can imagine that the filling of the barrel, depending on the size of the barrel, takes a little bit of time or a long time with a big barrel. So those people that have a genetic disposition are born with a big barrel, they can smoke and drink and eat what they want and stay healthy up to old age. And other people that are born with a very small barrel when they do the same things and the others or are in an environment that fills their barrel early, the disease symptoms come early, sometimes even in childhood. And of course, there's traumatic event. It's like putting a nail in the barrel and it starts to overflow earlier or devastating traumas. And the pandemic, by the way, was such a nail in the uh, barrel. Now, again, it's really a, bar a balance between the size of the barrel, how much flows in, in the barrel by the rain, and how much you can detoxify or drain out of your barrel by the size of your spout. Now, there's one thing you can't change. That's your genetic disposition, the size of the barrel. There's two things you can change. The amount of rain, you let rain in your barrel and the amount of drainage and the amount of drainage you can change by supporting the detoxification organs of your body, which are the gut, which are the kidneys, which are the lungs, which are the skin. Never forget your skin. And of course, the gut, I mean the whole stomach organs with liver, uh, gallbladder, um, 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 metastinum, and, and all those organs. And I'll teach a separate series about that. Okay, now, what the heck does that all have to do with your brain? Let's talk about physical aspects of brain health for a few minutes. We have the gut-brain axis where it shows that our gut and our brain are closely connected so much that actually our gut has been called, the nervous system, the, 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 the systems in our gut have been called the second brain. And it absolutely is true. We think with our gut just as much as with the brain. Uh, the brain is a little bigger and has different functions. But... I mean, when you talk about the gut feeling or butterflies in your stomach, it's obvious what we eat, how we feel is also determined by your gut health and diseases that affect our gut health and pretty much everything does our food, the toxins, stress level affects gut health and gut health in turn affects brain health. I'll teach about that much more because it's fascinating and we can influence it in different ways. As I said, in the barrel model, you can either reduce the, 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 the rain for the gut health. That means what you eat, what kind of food you eat, the quality of food you eat, or you can uh, uh, influence the gut health by certain supplements like uh, um, probiotic, prebiotics, and others. Rebuild your gut brain barrier. You have to remove biofilms, all those little things, remove infections, lots of stuff that you can do to improve gut health and improve assimilation, absorption, and digestion. And those all influence brain health on a physical level. and actually make you feel better because you probably know that 95 to 90 percent of serotonin and other important feel good hormones and neurotransmitters are actually produced by the second brain in your gut so it all goes together that's why psychotherapy alone often does not work now here hormones of course hormones are important 
as women, we know when we go through menopause, suddenly our metabolism slows down. When we have problems with the thyroid, we gain weight. Uh, other factors affect brain health uh, and weight. Uh, hormones are very important for, for, for us as people. By the way, vitamin D is a hormone, which many people don't appreciate. They just know it as a supplement, but it's way more than that. Cholesterol is a precursor for all hormones. And if you take cholesterol-lowering drugs for any amount of times, you make the ability of your body to produce hormones and have healthy fats for the brain, you lower that ability. So think about before you agree to do something like that. Um, other important things, nutrition. I love what Michael Pollan says, if it came from a plant, you can eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. <laughs> now you have to go a little bit more specific in our modern time. And uh, uh, if it came from a plant that wasn't uh, uh, fertilized with toxic fertilizers and sprayed with toxic herbicides, and, and, and there's many, many, many aspects to it. And I personally uh, am a fan also of natural and humane, if you can apply that, uh, animal rearing. I do eat animal foods because it's normal for humans. We are omnivores by design, by our genetic design. Animal foods support brain health and overall health. Now, there's ways to thrive without it. It's much easier if you choose to eat a limited amount of healthy animal foods. Now, for those that are more interested in it, I wrote a little book. Yeah, I detail what's good to eat and uh, eating for vibrant health and explosive energy. Ask me for it, I'll give it to you for free. Now, toxins, drugs, addictions, big problem for brain health. You know, it's really true. There are too many people counting calories and not enough people counting chemicals. It's true. And there is a food addiction, especially to processed foods, salty snacks like chips, cheesy, stuff like that. And of course, candy and chocolate. I was terribly addicted to chocolate. If I had a chocolate bar in the closet, it was calling me. I couldn't sit still without thinking about it. And if that's you, there's ways to curb craving, ways to curb cra food addiction with natural ways. You don't need pills for that. Infections, big problem, as we have learned with the COVID pandemic. It wasn't the first time that infections were important for our health. Infections have been important of, for our health for millennia, for how, how long ever humans existed. And we have actually very powerful systems to deal with that. It's called the immune system, and you can support it with natural means. And you don't have to be afraid of most infections. And I will talk about more about that. Allergies, sensitivities, we say it's an overreaction of the immune system, and it is. But the question that often does not get answered is, why does the immune system overreact in the first place? When you go to an allergist doctor, he probably won't answer that question. Try to ask him or her, see what they say. Oh, well, it's just the way you are. It's just the way your genes are made. No, it's not true. Allergies are more sensitivities are more often, and there's reasons for that. I'll teach about that too. I can't say that in this overview presentations, but wait, I'm happy to talk about that. I just wait for it. The dragon of inflammation. One of the physical aspects of brain health. Inflammation is so common. And many doctors measure inflammation, which is great. There's a measurement, a lab test called CRP, C-reactive protein that measures inflammation. It's relatively cheap. It's easy to get if the doctor thinks about it. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. And uh, if you can always ask for it. It's a basic test for inflammation. And if it's beyond one, one is acceptable, because we all have inflammation in the body. We all have inflammation is nothing bad per se. We need inflammation because it initiates tissue repair. And we'll talk about autophagy, inflammation, and too much inflammation too. 
But if inflammation does not get stopped by the body, which is the normal way of the body to downregulate, if that regulation is out of whack, it's not the inflammation that hurts you. It's the regulation that is not functioning properly. It's that the inflammation won't stop when the repair is done, when the, when the cancer cells are destroyed, when the virus or whatever you have is destroyed, when the inflammation does not stop because the regulation is not working. That's when disease comes. That's when you have an autoimmune disease. And by the way, inflammation plays a big role in mental health, depression, brain fog associated with infl inflammation, Dementia is associated with inflammation. Many chronic illnesses that we say are age-related are really inflammatory. And you might have heard of the omega-3-6 level. And it is very important to know your omega-3-6 index. You can ask me for the test. I wrote a blog about it. And I actually had a good interview with the co-founder of the omega-3 index, Dr. Bill Harris, on my website, I'll be happy to send it to you. It is very important to regulate that inflammation in omega-3, 6 in the right balance, eaten properly or substituted, will help the body to revamp that regulation, reinstate the, regu the, uh, the, the, the regulation and downregulate inflammation to a normal level. That's why omega-3s are important. Okay, medications can be a blessing. I'm enough of a conventional doctor to really appreciate it. If I break my arm, I want conventional medicine. Sorry, I don't want herbs when I broke my arm. I want conventional medicine. But the more chronic your illness is, the more important it is to look at natural options first, lifestyle options first, and train your brain to develop the habits and the behaviors you need to do every day to actually implement it. Because so many of us, we know what we should do, but we just can't do it. So that's when a coach can be helpful. Now let's talk a little bit more about medication. I'm not against them, as I said. I'm against the overuse of medication and the use of medication when natural options also would do. And Sadly, sometimes it goes like this in a doctor's appointment when the patient says, doctor, the medicine makes me feel worse, not better. The doctor says, hmm, let's increase the dose. Let's add a second medication. It happened to me, happened to friends of mine, happened to many people exactly like that. And let me ask you, does it make sense? I don't think so. There is other options. And I think we need to wake up as people, take responsibility for our health and not delegate it to some expert, not even to me. Think for yourself. Sometimes I say, if the brain was an app, like the ones we use for computer games, maybe people would use it more. Come on, think for yourself. You can do it. You are given a very powerful brain by nature. Train it, help it, heal it, and use it. <laughs> All right, let's go on. There is traumatic brain injuries that can be devastating because our brain is really soft. It is like a little jello blob. And you can imagine what happens when you have a jello blob and you throw it against the wall. That is like a traumatic brain injury. It splashes all around. It gets traumatized. That's a traumatic brain injury. And I'm always awed at the ability of our brain to repair itself after often devastating brain injuries. But every concussion, every pre-concussive blow constitutes a brain injury. You can see it in brain scan and you can heal it often by putting your brain and your body in a brain healing environment. Now let's talk about weight issues. Many of us struggle with maintaining a weight. And as you've seen, a healthy weight requires a healthy brain. 
because if you struggle with your eating patterns, something in your brain is not all right. It could be a physical thing. It could be a thought thing. It could be many things. It is complex. And I just want to alert you how complex our body is, how awesome this body is, how wonderful this world of wellness in the body is. It's really magical what we have here. Our body, our mind, our spirit, how it goes together, all together. The world of wellness is magical, friends. All right. Let's talk about sleep. So many of us have sleep problems. And maybe that's your problem. It's often my problem when the brain tells me, oh, hi, I see you're seconds away from falling asleep. Allow me to take this time to flood you with the most amazing idea ever. All of it you'll forget by the morning. So this thought sometimes wakes me up in the middle of the night when my brain comes at me with an amazing idea and I know I'll forget it by the morning so I have to get up and write it down okay if that happens once in a while it's okay the brain takes the sleep it needs it's no it doesn't make sense to stress over sleep but we have to allow us enough rest enough take down time to actually relax and sleep and here's where mindfulness and meditation can be extremely helpful now, stress, hey, who didn't feel like that sometimes? You sit in front of the computer, that stupid thing won't do what you want it to do. It happens to me. It happens to even computers, programmers. It happens to everyone. If you think it's you who's being stupid that you can't manage that, think again. It's never the operator. It's always the computer or the programmer that did not make the computer so you as a human can use it. So never take it on as your failure when the computer doesn't work. It's a computer's fault. Well, there's ways to fix those stupid things. And there's even better ways to heal our body. You can't heal a computer. <laughs> the computers can't think, thankfully. I hope they never will be made so they think for themselves. Because I think without safeguards, it could be extremely dangerous. Now. Stress is a big issue in our time. And of course, taking a hammer and actually destroying the computer that we use for work is not a helpful reaction. It's not a helpful behavior. There's ways, mindfulness meditation, yoga, tai chi, mindful exercise, mindful movement. I call it intuitive, intentional movement is much more helpful. Ah, there we are, movement and exercise. Who thought that the exercise, the movement you do is good for your brain? But it is. And without movement, our brain literally shrivels up and gets bad. And we know that movement, especially high intensity in interval training, if you can do it, it actually builds new connection in the brain and increases new brain cells, especially in the hippocampus, which is an area of the brain responsible for learning and memory. Hey, you need that brain-derived neurotrophic factor. You might have heard of BDNF. That's what it is. The exercise that the brain needs builds new cells and new connections. Environment is important. What environment are you in? What environment are the animals in that you eat? On the left, that's a typical, typical cage battery of chickens. It's disheartening sometimes when you know how fierce and happy animals can be when they are in their natural environment and receiving their natural food. Here on the right, you see one of the chickens we had. Isn't he, she a doozy, one of our laying hens? So confident. She does not mind posing for the picture. Now let's go to the thought patterns. Some people think when they have the same glass in front of them, I'm half full or I'm half empty. It's the same thing. Look at it in two different ways. 
And it's quite important to train your brain to look at a half full glass instead of saying it is half empty. Then, of course, many people have suffered from childhood memory abuse, ACEs. Trauma is quite popular right now. In my opinion, having been a mom myself and made all the mistakes that there in the book, I tried the best, I read the books, I made all the mistakes anyway. I think I created trauma for my children as a mother. Now, how do you let go of the guilt feelings? Many moms feel very guilty when they realize what they did. I did for a while, but there's ways to let go of that guilt and free yourself because it does not help your children. It does not help yourself. And I think there's really no way for parents to raise a child without creating some kind of trauma because we are people, we are humans, we are not perfect. We are not uh, child rearing and uh, education and parenting machines. So the question really is how can we heal the trauma that we and other people have experienced as children, as adults sometimes? And how can we heal the trauma that we inflicted on ourselves? Because it's really ourselves that we have to heal later on. And there's many methods that can help. My favorite one is havening techniques, and I will uh, create events around that topic. You have heard of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disease, and somebody can't let go of an event that was traumatic at the time, a serious car accident or others. Now, it is another of the diagnoses that are quite in favor nowadays. It is just as much healable with the right interventions. It is not that you have to have PTSD for the rest of your life. If a past event and the memories of the event have, have the, 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 the energy, the potential, the power over you to make you feel bad, there are ways to address it. And my favorite, again, is havening techniques. It does an amazing way to train your brain to change those memories into just memories without the attached emotion. That's the trick. Let's go on and uh, talk about ant infestations in your brain. Now, I don't mean the crawlers, but <laughs> Dr. Amen coined the term ants, automatic negative thoughts. <laughs> For the negative way, we talk to us very often, the negative self-talk. I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. I'm a loser. I can't do that. <laughs> this will never work. My teacher's going to laugh at me. The audience won't like what I have to say. Yeah, it's right. We all say that. And there's also ways to train your brain to change those thoughts. And Dr. Daniel Amen has created a method that is fun to do. Now, if you choose to become an, your own internal ant eater, isn't it more fun than saying, I go and do cognitive behavioral therapy. So if you have negative thoughts, you label yourself as something that makes you feel bad. Don't despair. It's not bad. It's normal. We all do it. The trick is to train your brain to learn to let go of them and change them to more helpful thoughts. You can do it. Over time, your brain will believe it because your brain believes everything you think. It's important to pay attention to what you think. Huh? There is this toxic thoughts and people. And that is often a question of boundaries. We all experience toxic people, whether we let them into our inner sanctum, whether we let them penetrate our inner fence, our inner pearl, our inner self is up to us. And we can learn to establish healthy boundaries to not let that happen. And many people are deadly afraid of especially anger and aggression from others. Now, you know the old saying, sticks and stones can hurt your bones, but words will never hurt you. Sadly, it's not true. Words cannot hurt you if you have that boundary, that fence around your pearl. 
but many people grow up without it. And then words hurt them deeply. The solution, in my opinion, is not to force everybody to only say gentle things to each other, which is impossible. We are humans. Come on, we make mistakes. We get angry. We say things that we later regret. But then to have a method to apologize, of course, when you hurt somebody else involuntarily, but also a method to start getting those boundaries so that those angry outbursts of other people do not affect our inner core anymore. And we can learn to appropriate, react to it. It's called assertiveness, saying no without feeling guilty about it, accepting compliments, because really they're true. If somebody says you have pretty hair, assume they mean it and say thank you and say, oh man, I have to go to the hairdresser now. <laughs> Social issues are important. You have not enough money. You have no support at all. It's a sad thing. Worries are very common nowadays. And worries are really when your brain thinks about the future in a negative way. And you can train your brain to think about the future more realistically. That's a trick to end worries. Yes, there will be financial stresses sometimes. But if you constantly sit on your Chesterfield and say to yourself, oh my God, is it never going to end? I don't know how to address it. Why is it so terrible? I'll never be able to change it. Then you feel helpless, hopeless, and depressed and ready to give up. And what do you do then? You start eating, of course. When you are an overeater like me, you grab the candy, the chocolate, the chips, the comfort food. You feel better for a moment. But then after a few hours, the guilt sets in. Oh my God, what did I do to myself? I'm such a loser. I'm such a failure. Train your brain to change that. You can do it. Now let's go to the spiritual aspects. And I don't mean organized religion. Spirituality in my books, uh, and I, for full disclosure, I have a Christian background. So for me, spirituality means the connection with the higher power of the universe, the mystical aspects of God. And for me as a Christian background, I've read the Bible cover to cover. I know there's very true sentences in the Bible and I love it. I also studied comparative religion. There are similar aspects of Quran, Judaism, uh, Buddhism, Taoism, other world religions, and all spiritual leaders of the world have said the same thing. And in the end, it means only love is real. Never forget that. And love is all there is. And everything that organized religion makes out of it can be helpful or harmful to individual social groups and whole societies. Now, what does it mean for our brain? We need, as humans, have to have a feeling of purpose. We need to know our answers. There's no general answer. Our personal answer to the three big W's. They are, who am I? Do you have a sense who you are? Why am I here on this planet? Do you know? Do you have a feeling for it? And what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Because your life is going to end just like mine and everybody else's. Think about it. Don't be afraid of that. Use it as motivator to live your life now with purpose, meaning, and passion. I train your brain to do that too. Now, let's talk about mindfulness. I love mindfulness. In the basic, it's the same as I said before. It's living in the now without losing a meaning for the purpose. Now, if you are like this poor donut and don't have a center, if somebody asks you to find your center, it is quite futile and you get frustrated. So in my books, you have to have some preparation before you start a mindfulness meditation practice. Kind of like that donut. You have to have a center, a meaning, a passion. You have to know who you are. And then you can fully express yourself in the moment. I love mindful movement. It's so healing. Tai Chi, yoga, qigong, 
very, very helpful. And yes, there's cultural aspects, spirituality aspects, religious backgrounds, but question your religious leaders. See if they really do what they say, if they act out of love, if they create fear in you, or if they create love in you. I think that's an important thing to realize when judging anybody. All right, I've talked for a long time. Let's talk and end a little bit about what can we do. There's lots. There's many, many things we can do to help our brain and many, many things to avoid that hurt our brain. And I'll teach about them more and those will be available to you. Just ask me for it in a little worksheet that you can get for free. The best thing is there is hope for all of us. And my story exemplifies it. When you remember how fat I was and how unhappy just 16 years ago. And look at me now, very different person. You can do that too. If you are stuck in a dark place, in the dark end of a tunnel, never give up. There is a light at the end of the tunnel for you too. You might need a guide to guide you up the mountain. You might need somebody to help you through those darkness. But there is a light. And believe me, it's not a freight train, even though you may think it right now. And it really entices what all you need is adjustments, your diet, mindset, you said eating, maybe some nutritional supplements, stress sleep management, it all works together in one whole. So if you haven't realized that by now, please do, there is hope. It's not easy. It revolves around training your brain. And that is the thing that's missing in most weight loss programs. The training your brain for lasting weight loss, training your brain for safe and healthy weight loss. And it will not only lead to lasting weight loss, and it will improve your health in all five dimensions. So that can't be bad. So before we end up, Christmas is coming. If you uh, celebrate Christmas or the holidays, here's my... Uh, little suggestion how to avoid burnout during the early days. <clears throat> Don't do it like poor Santa. He got stressed out. Pace yourself. Do one thing at a time. And once you did the one thing, celebrate because you did it. And that makes you feel better immediately. You know, habit change, brain training needs to feel good while you're doing it or you won't keep up. The same with weight loss. If you're trying to White knuckle weight loss, you will fail. Weight loss has to feel good. Lifestyle change has to feel good or you will not do it. And that's why I incorporate fun and feel good exercises in all I do. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll turn off that presentation and see if there's any questions. And if there's not right now, Feel free, please, uh, afterwards, when you watch it, to PM me, comment on it, send me an email, go to this uh, uh, URL. Uh, it leads you to a uh, free call with me and talk with me, and I'll be happy to explain a little bit more what training your brain for lasting weight loss may need, mean for you. Bye-bye.